This is Pav Bamber for PSP Sports. I'm at the Nip Blackwell versus Chris Eubank Jr. fight. With me, I've got a Sky Sports boxing analyst, Mr. Spencer Ferrin. Spencer, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, we've just witnessed an absolute war in the ring between uh, Nip Blackwell and Chris Eubank Jr. What do you make of the fight? And um, Chris Eubank Jr. won by stoppage in the 10th. Um, it, was, it was a legit stoppage. He, um, he, he, he fought gallantly in uh, Nick Blackwell. And um, it, I predicted that it was going to end in the 10th round. And it did. But he, he showed a lot. Of, he, Nick Blackwell showed a lot of heart in there as well. A lot of resilience. Lots of guys would have caved in earlier. Maybe, just maybe, they could have stopped the fight. Um, they could have stopped the fight oh, from, the from round seven. It, it seemed like it was a hiding to nothing. Um, now Nick Blackwell's been taken to hospital. Please go. We just pray that he's going to be okay. In your opinion, what do you think the keys to success were for Eubank? Um, the fact that he, he he was faster off the trigger, so he'd he'd throw he's put his combinations in a lot more faster. And by the time they, they his his combinations were set off, there was nothing that Nick Blackwell could do to offset that. So it was down to um, Eubank's timing, and he was through hellacious uppercuts in there. He'd like he'd put his shoulder in and turn his whole body up for the right uppercuts, and there was nothing that Nick Blackwell could do. And he was so susceptible to that shot that maybe just maybe like. Um, Blackwell could have done um, cross-arm defence to try to get up close. But when he did get up close, he couldn't do nothing because he was bludgeoned by shots. Chris Eubank Jr., ever since he lost to Pedro Saunders, has wanted the rematch. Um, how do you see that rematch going, Spencer? Well, you got you got to look at it. You have to be realistic. On tonight's performance, I've never ever seen anybody do that to Nick Blackwell. And he's been here with good guys. Um, well, Mike Murray, Billy Ross Saunders himself. Um, and they couldn't do that to him. What I saw that was that was um, that was monstrous by by Chris Eubank Jr. But in saying that, Billy Joel Saunders has, has, has just beat Andy Lee. Where a lot of people were not too too sure whether he could beat Andy Lee, and he got the win over over Andy Lee. So he's risen. He stocks risen as well. So it's a great fight. Remember, it was a split decision last time. It was a split decision because Eubank Jr. didn't do nothing for five rounds. If he'd have done something in in if he had done something in two of those five rounds and it was a split decision, then he would have won the fight. So both have learned so much. It's a, it's a great fight and only time could tell. Also tonight, um, Kilbrook stopped Kevin Bizier in, in emphatic fashion. He's still IBF fourth-weight champion. What do you see next for Kilbrook? He's had a very frustrating 12 months with injury. Um, do you see him fighting the big names out like Bradley, uh, Thurman, so on and so forth? Well, the talk, you know, forget that. I think that the key fight, the key fight that they should be trying to aim for, is um, to try and get Miguel Cotto because Miguel Cotto is is not a middleweight. He's he's told you, he's he said on many a times that I'm not really a middleweight. Um, so I think Eddie Hearn should be shooting for 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 that fight for him. Bring it over here. Bring it pay per view. Even though Kel Brook is the A side of the script because he's a, the IBF um, world champion, but they should give. Miguel Cotto because he demands a lot of money so give Miguel Cotto the, the, the A side of the, the payment side to make the fight happen but then Kel Brook who I believe could win that fight um, could win that fight and then you could he could demand other bigger names because then he's stuck with a risen state side In terms of the heavyweights we've got Huey Fury now in the ring we've got Tyson Fury at ringside uh, Anti Joshua is fighting ne uh, next week against Charles Martin how do you see Joshua Martin going Spencer? Um, three rounds Three rounds. I think that's a three-round fight. Or Joshua to win. Or Anthony Joshua. I see cardinal sins that what Martin does. Even though I like Martin's energy, but I've been sitting down studying him now because I got doing a tactical breakdown of, um, of of the fight for Sky. And as I'm watching, I'm seeing the mistakes that he makes. And I think that Anthony Joshua has to capitalize on it. The longer the fight goes, the more difficult it's going to be for Anthony Joshua because he hasn't he hasn't been in there. He hasn't been past seven rounds, right? So Martin. I see when Martin throws his jab, Martin throws a jab from a southpaw position, but he dips over here. So you're actually dip, dipping in the line, the strict range of a big right hand. Nobody in the heavyweight division throws a more hellacious uh, right hand than, than Anthony Joshua. And if Anthony Joshua can tee up that by peppering out the jab, but throwing a jab with a little bit more force on it to make him try to evade that jab, and as he tries to evade the jab, catch him with that right hand, I can see this fight going three rounds. Uh, finally, Spencer, uh, we've got, obviously, as I said before, we've got Tyson Fury here ringside. Uh, I spoke to Mick Hennessy on Thursday. He said that uh, a, a rematch announcement is imminent, imminent soon with the Klitschko saying that they will happily come to the UK. If that is in the UK, um, how, how great would it be for the fans? And also, do you think Fury can beat Klitschko again? I think, of course, he can. 
What are you talking about? I, you know what I mean? Uh, Tyson, Tyson Fury technically is the best heavyweight in the world. Um, he's, he's a very, very clever man. It's just that because of his body frame, uh, some of the things that he does don't look right. But he's very, very clever because he gets away with it. Absolutely. Right. And, and you, have to, you have to look at it now. A guy can box southpaw. Mm. Can box orthodox. Yeah, you know I mean, can 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 punch head, can punch body. He's got, um, he's got, he's, he's got very ambitious punch, uh, uh economy mm. and work rate. So I would tip him to most probably he could even maybe stop Klitschko in a rematch mm, if that fight happens. To tell you the truth, you know what I think is really going to happen. I think Klitschko is going to retire. I think, really? yeah, I think, I think um, Vladimir Klitschko is actually going to retire and he's just mucking around with Mick Hennessy and Tyson Fury. And it's sad because I think the whole country should be more embracing of Tyson Fury for what he's going to and accomplish and what he's achieved. And unfortunately, he hasn't got that. Mm. But all he's got to do is keep on winning. And that's all he's got to do is to keep on winning and, and, and then everything else will fall into place for him. Ben so I just want to thank you so much for, for giving, me, for giving me some of your time. PBS, right? PSB Sports. PB, ah, no, it's something like that. I know I, was, I, I got you lot on Twitter, right? Yeah, so I know I got you lot, I got you on Twitter. This year, and I'm telling you, everyone else, yeah, keep it hashtag toe to toe, ringside toe to toe. Tweet your questions out and I'll give you a big, big up on the show, all right? Oh, thanks for Spencer. Appreciate that, man. Take care.